Hi this is Mike again. Today I want to discuss how the idea of globalism is a plot led by the ideas of the Antichrist to destroy the current world order and to establish the new world order. We can see these ideas coming to fruition today with the war in Ukraine and the recent war between Iran and Israel through Iran's proxy, Hamas. So why are the globalists for the war in the Middle East? As the radical ideology of globalism comes under increasing pressure worldwide, a number of prominent theologians are joining the discussion, blasting the internationalist movement as demonic and even antichrist in nature. This argument is hardly new. Of course, critics of globalism who deal primarily in the physical realm have long attacked globalists and their political schemes to subvert national sovereignty as dangerous, totalitarian, extreme, kooky, fringe, and yes, even treasonous. But as globalism becomes politically toxic around the world and across the political spectrum, the spiritual implications of globalism are coming under fresh scrutiny too. There are numerous different definitions of globalism. Until recently, even the word itself was relatively obscure, used mostly by the alternative media to describe the views of establishment figures pushing what they themselves tout as the new world order. At the core of globalism as it is presented publicly is the idea that nation states and borders need to give way to international governing institutions such as the United Nations, the European Union, and other global outfits. Critics oppose the scheming for a broad range of reasons. For one, globalism aims to disenfranchise citizens and strip them of their right to self-government at the local, state, and national levels in favor of what is euphemistically referred to as global governance. If power tends to corrupt and absolute power corrupts absolutely, as the old saying goes, the implications of total power at the global level are obvious. And that is just the start of the problem. Globalists tend to be fanatically anti-liberty, too. For a growing number of Christian theologians, though, there is an even darker, spiritual agenda behind the globalist agenda. Globalism is far more than geographical or eliminating national borders and boundaries, explained Dr. Jim Garlow, pastor at Skyline Church in San Diego, in a piece a few years ago that went viral on Charisma News earning almost half of a million Facebook likes in less than two months. It is spiritual and demonic at its core. In his massively popular article, aimed at Christians who are on the fence about voting for Trump, the pastor argues that very few people understand it. But it explains a lot. This is quite likely one of the main reasons why Trump is hated, he wrote, suggesting that Trump's publicly stated anti-globalism, pro-borders positions are the reason the globalist establishment has been freaking out like never before. Do your homework on this one. Think principalities and powers. Trump's ideas go against what the globalists want and the goals they are trying to achieve. The principalities and powers is a reference to a well-known Bible verse. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places, writes Paul in Ephesians 6:12. Other theologians, including those who are not Trump fans, have pointed out that the Bible and Judeo-Christian tradition have a lot to say on borders, and by extension, globalism. A major objection to globalism from a spiritual and biblical point of view is that many of the globalists are pushing for a global value system. We are seeing this in how the globalists are pushing for a central bank digital currency. The Biden administration is desperately trying to get this implemented before he leaves office. The recent Fed Now system is just the start of the implementation of this system. Central bank digital currencies are already being announced in many of the countries. The whole idea behind these systems is to gain better control over their populations. With these systems, the central governments will be able to control their respective populations and give them the ability to implement a social scoring system similar to that used in China. If Trump or another strong anti-globalist is not elected in 2024, the globalists will be able to implement a social score system and a digital currency. Combating the claim of Christian theologians on the issue is EU President Jean-Claude Juncker who claims that borders are the worst invention ever made by politicians, Christians argue that borders are, in reality, essential in a fallen world. The Bible shows that gatekeeping is a critical component of what sometimes is referred to as the theology of borders. Getting rid of borders would be extremely dangerous, too, because within borders a particular civilization can choose to uphold those principles that we, as Christians, believe are at the heart of what makes a civilization a civilization. Without sovereign nations and borders to separate them, the only alternative to that is a global governance scenario which is terrifying. The consequences of ignoring Judeo-Christian and biblical principles on borders and immigration would be disastrous. We can already see how this is impacting the United States as we have over 1 million illegal immigrants flowing into the United States each year. This is slowly destroying our nation. 
it appears that the progressives are feverishly trying to recover the Garden of Eden by constructing a borderless utopia. This movement is being led by globalists such as billionaire George Soros, Democrat U.S. President Joe Biden, and others for their extreme policies of allowing anyone and everyone to immigrate. Behind this globalist idea is what I call an antichrist spirit at work in the world that opposes the kingdom of Christ. The kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ is the highest form of civilization, and the one promised to us in the Bible after the Lord returns and conquers Satan in the end times. The anti-civilization represented by antichrist is the opposite of that. So if the kingdom of Christ is righteousness, the anti-civilization is evil and injustice. If the kingdom of Christ is peace, the kingdom of antichrist is conflict. If the kingdom of Christ is joy in the Holy Spirit, anti-civilization is misery. Top Catholic leaders have also been warning about globalist developments, including what one senior cleric referred to as the ongoing Islamic conquest of Europe enabled by the EU's anti-borders extremism. One such critic was Cardinal Christoph Schönborn who warned that many Muslims want a third Islamic attempt to conquer Europe and they say this will be the end of Europe. He was speaking about the 333rd anniversary of the Battle of Vienna in which Christian European armies succeeded in turning back a massive Muslim invasion force. It was not the first time that this happened. The recent immigration of Muslims was another attempt to achieve this result. In fact, statistics show that by 2040 or sooner Europe will be a Muslim-dominant continent because of the number of Muslim births. On globalism more broadly, Jewish thinkers have also made similar arguments, and not just because the state of Israel fervently defends its own borders against hostile regimes all around it. The Christian Post interviewed George Mason University Law School professor Jeremy Rabkin, a Jew and the author of the 2004 book The Case for Sovereignty, Why the World Should Welcome American Independence. He argues, among other points, that globalism is fundamentally at odds with democratic forms of government. Beyond that it is not democratic, there's something about it that is a little creepy, a little uncanny, Rabkin was quoted as saying about globalism. It's basically saying we are going to organize the world in a way that establishes an artificial consensus. It's not enough to say it's undemocratic. It's threatening it's almost demonic. It is a world organized independently of people's fundamental religious convictions. Of course, it is hardly the first time that globalism has been identified publicly as being demonic in nature. In 1995, Gary Ka, who served as Europe and Middle East trade specialist for the Indiana state government, published the book The Demonic Roots of Globalism, on route to spiritual deception where he argued much the same thing. In essence, he argues that the secret societies and other forces pushing the so-called New World Order are fundamentally evil. And even he was not the first one to state this fact. Indeed, Christians have long cited biblical prophecies warning of the rise of global government. While there are many eschatological interpretations, the Bible is very clear on some issues, including the idea that the enemy hopes to build up a global totalitarian system that opposes God and his people. But as well-known pastors have long pointed out, that is no excuse for Christians to sit back and not oppose evil. Even secular leaders have come out forcefully against the globalist extremism, arguing that it is aimed at undermining Christianity and Western civilization. A recent Hungarian prime minister, for example, blasted what he called the treasonous conspiracy to flood Europe with Islamic migrants as part of an effort by internationalists in Brussels to subvert Christendom and nation-states on the road to world order. A few years ago, with the Brexit movement in the United Kingdom, the rise of Trump in the United States, and growing nationalist sentiment spreading across the West and the world, globalism appeared to be in a major crisis. Even globalist publications and leaders have acknowledged as much. However, globalists remain extraordinarily powerful, influential, and even dangerous. Today, it appears that globalists have regained the upper hand with the election of Joe Biden in the United States. Opponents of globalism should continue to expose and resist the dangerous anti-sovereignty extremism of the establishment. Liberty, Judeo-Christian civilization, and America literally depend on it. I hope this discussion demonstrates the threat of globalism and what it means for both Christians and non-Christians in America and the world today. To learn more about this and other threats to our culture today, visit the Nehemiah Reset website at nehemiahreset.org or our Rumble channel. We look forward to seeing you again on another of our videos. Have a great day!